Hey, hey, this is Mike Butler with Process Engineer School. Today we're talking about the fundamentals of how a loss and weight feeder works. First, we're going to go through the basics of how they work in theory, and then we're going to go through a real-world example to show what, what types of data will are common to actually see. Next, we're going to go through what can go wrong, and I'll give you a hint. It's a lot. Uh, we'll go through a couple examples. So first, we're going to show a video. I found a good animation on YouTube. This video was created by what looks to be a distributor of Katron loss and weight feeders. Katron is the manufacturer. Um, in this setup that they have, which is a common setup, there is a surge tank that is constantly refilled and emptied. So it is refilled from above. Separate, it's separated from a much larger storage tank, storage silo by a valve here, probably a butterfly valve. It is on load cells. It's on three load cells, which are these red uh, cylinders. And the weight is constantly being read. And it is going to measure a flow rate that exits the powder, that exits the surge tank through these screws at the bottom. And the screws are turning. The rate at which they are turning is what will depict the flow rate. The faster the screws are turning, the higher the flow rate. The way it knows what speed to be turning the screws is based off of the controller. The controller is constantly looking at the weight of the surge tank, and it's looking at how much it is losing per time. So if in a given minute, if it loses 10 pounds, then the flow rate is 10 pounds per minute. And it will regulate the screw speed so that it gets to the, so it makes the flow rate equal to the, what is the targeted amount of flow. So the first step that the animation shows is with a certain amount of powder, the screws are turning, which is making a certain flow rate coming out of the surge tank and going into the process. As the surge tank gets low, the butterfly valve opens and the storage silo, uh, deposits powder into the surge tank, and the process repeats. So looking over on the right, there is the net hopper weight. So the hopper is what I've been calling the surge tank. And over time, with given what is presumably a constant flow rate, the hopper, or the surge tank, is constantly losing weight. It gets to a refill point, and of course the weight that is measured in the hopper increases and then it starts feeding again and coming down. The motor speed, which is the depicting what, how fast the screws are turning, starts out at a lower rate and has to increase as the, um, there is some head pressure caused by the powder. Powder will intrinsically act a little bit like a fluid so that the more powder that is in the surge tank, the slower the screws have to turn because there's some amount of pressure pushing the powder through the screws. As the hopper refills, the motor speed decreases. Now this is all calculated in this shaded section. It, it cannot know exactly what the loss in weight is because the there's actually a, a gain in weight while it is refilling. So this happens in the, the magic of the controller. And the output that the controller is sending onto the PLC is the mass flow rate. So, and presumably this flow rate is going to be fairly constant. So, while we are in steady state, while we're in gravimetric mode, the motor speed may be increasing, but that is so that the effect is the mass flow rate is constant. And then when we're in volumetric mode, while the hopper is refilling, the motor speed does decrease as it gets more head pressure from the increase in amount of powder in the hopper, but the mass flow rate stays constant, and the process repeats. So this is how the theory works. We're not always going to have this clean of data, of course, and we're not always going to, it's, it's just not going to come out exactly looking like this. So here's a real world example. In this plot, I have the surge tank, I'll just start calling it the hopper, the hopper weight, which is the blue, and over the course of this batch that we're making, um, it, the weight in the hopper is decreasing, and there's no refill shown here. 
the red is the is the flow rate. So it's it's about thirty five pounds per minute that we are of a of a white free flowing powder. Uh, it's a lot like baking soda that is coming out in that is being injected into our process. So that that this is what it looks like when everything is going well. Now the green here I'm showing is the screw speed. It's the percent output of the motor. So 100% being the hardest that the motor can work and zero being the motor is off. So we saw the theory that as the hopper gets lower, the screw speed should be increasing because there's less of a head pressure caused by the powder. We don't actually see that, um, but it is, it's fairly constant in this case. And even though this is a pretty good example, it's not perfect. So if we zoom in on the very beginning of this batch, again, the red is the flow rate, and it starts, it, it's giving a, an assumed amount of flow rate as it is um, kind of calibrating, as it is, it has to have some amount of previous data points of weight in order to calculate the, the flow rate. So it determines that the flow rate is increasing, and so it sends the screw speed slower, which makes perfect sense. And then eventually, the slower screw speed means that the flow rate decreases. And then as the flow rate comes back down, the screw speed increases back up. So zooming in a little bit on this flow rate, which is the red, the, screw, the flow rate increases, screw speed decreases, and then they eventually equilibrate, and they're both come into steady state. So all, all the while this is happening, there is a totalized amount of powder fed that the PLC is doing, which is this purple. And this is required because we need to know exactly how much we put in. So essentially it's integrating the, the area under the curve of the flow rate, which is the red. So over the course of this batch, the, the totalized amount of powder that goes through ends up being about 880 pounds uh, shown here as this 880 value, which is the value of the totalized amount, the purple, at this blue vertical cursor. So what can go wrong? In this example, I show an example of how the screw speed was bouncing near zero because there is a suction pulling out the powder. We call this flooding through or around the screw. So there is a suction that is just making the powder free flowing through the screw and inside the snout of the screw um, being injected into our process. So even though this green, which is the screw speed, it starts running, but it quickly realizes that it needs to slow way down. And even though it comes back down to zero, the flow rate is going higher and higher, and it is just in this uncontrolled state where the target that it's trying to get to is where it started. It's trying to come down and down, but you, it can't get the screw speed anywhere lower than zero. So at the end, it, it shuts off the valve to inject powder when the totalized amount gets to the correct amount. So we added the right amount, but this could be un, an undesirable effect in, in the process. Another example is kind of a restriction to flow. The red is the mass flow rate, so the flow rate is decreasing, and the green as the screw speed is increasing, looks to be uncontrollably, and eventually something happens, and it goes into a, a, a state that is not gravimetric mode. I can't say exactly what is happening, um, but it is not desirable for the process. Um, and it turns out that one of, another factor that's going on here is that if we zoom in on the hopper weight, which is the blue, so this is zoomed way in, and we didn't see it in the previous plots, but uh, there it is jumping. It, there are times where it is gaining weight, even though nothing is supposed to be going into the tank. So the difference between this valley and the peak is seven pounds uh, on a value of in the 600 pound range. So when, it, when the Katron sees this jump in weight, it thinks it's going into a filling mode. So it jumps into what is very similar to a volumetric mode. 
And while it's doing that, it sends the flow rate to an absolute constant amount, which it has to make an assumption if that's right or not. It may or may not be right. And the fact that we're in this mode for so long means that something is is uh, is definitely wrong and it's probably adding the wrong amount. So in conclusion, we talked about gravimetric versus volumetric mode. Gravimetric is when it's in steady state. It is relying on its loss and weight data to calculate the flow rate. Volumetric is when it makes certain assumptions while filling in order to um, depict what the flow rate will be. We showed a real world example that these pieces of equipment are very impressive, but they're not perfect. And we showed two examples of what can go wrong. Flooding where there's a vacuum pulling powder out of the hopper. And also we talked about weight cell perturbations. There was something making the, the hopper weight jump, which was causing the K-Tron to go into a non-gravimetric mode. So if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and even more importantly, write some comments about uh, topics or, that you would like to learn more about. I would love to hear or even see some um, video from your process and we can talk about um, how it could be improved or, or we could just share some of the learnings that you have. So thank you. Until next time. Goodbye.